Okay, can you hear me now? Uh, okay, so this is o'clock to you. We're not, we not going to wait for anybody again. I'm 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 not going to wait for anybody again. To your knowledge, your attention, and to give you so lifting some of God Ramadan. Inshallah, today we have another important guest and eminent scholar in our midst. And that's our father, our brother, Imam Ashek, Dr. Imran Alawi. He will be discussing and telling us about um, how we can use our Ramadan as a path to self reformation or to our self reformation. Uh, the way it's going to work with this, we hope to have Dr. Alawi with us for about one hour, but due to circumstances we might not be able to have him as much for one act. So you will deliver the lecture for about 30 minutes and then we'll keep 30 minutes for quick for 10 minutes for questions. 10 15 minutes for people questions. Please if you are just joining this platform kindly mute your phone. If you're on the platform please mute your phone. Please invite others. Bismillah Sheikh. Bismillah Rahman Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wasalatan وسلاما على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. As first of all, we thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى that our lives has been spared and preserved to witness. Today is fasting. We ask Allah to accept it from all of us, inshallah. Um, first of all, we need to remember that the most important reason why we undertake fasting during the month of Ramadan is to demonstrate our total obedience to Allah, who has commanded us to do so, to show our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also to reassure ourselves that we have indeed voluntarily and truly surrendered ourselves to Allah. Because Ramadan is something that we do privately between us and our Creator. And as a Muslims, uh, we believe that we are in this world on a journey of life. And that we are charged with a responsibility to look after this beautiful world and to realize that this life is trading place for Yom al Qiyamah. We need to remember that, that we are here to trade so that we can get the reward, Yom al Qiyamah. And of course, the path is littered with a number of challenges and obstacles. But the price for getting it right is phenomenal. The price is Al Jannah, the paradise, inshallah. And one of the uh, helping hands that Allah has provided us with is fasting in the month of Ramadan, which provides us with an annual training opportunity to update our skills correct our rustiness and defects, any defects in our system, and fulfill our character building needs for the rest of the year. It also offers us an annual vaccination to reinforce our endurance capacity so that we may have uh, 
sufficient energy, energy level to accomplish our mission with flying colors. Because the mission is not easy. And that's when in Ramadan, we have Rahma and we have Maghfira, blessing and the forgiveness from Allah. And at the end of Ramadan, as we are approaching now, the final price we're looking for is Itqun Minan Nar, is salvation from hellfire. So it's quite a price that we are competing for. Now, we have a look at the what is happening in Ramadan and how that is preparing us for the rest of the year. Again, Allah has made it clear in the Quran the reason behind Psalm Ramadan and that is لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ so that you can achieve these conscious consciousness of Allah all the time. And that is a huge, if we manage to do that, we're going to get certificate of waliyun min awliya illah. So wali, na khawfun alayhum wa lahum yahzanun. Alladheena amanu wa alladheena yattaqoon. Those who are believing Allah and maintain their consciousness of Allah. So, we have two main things which is essential for us in Ramadan. One is uh, unshakable determination. al qawiyya very strong determination because if we don't have strong determination there's no way anybody can refrain from eating for 12 13 even sometimes 14 hours no eating no drinking so we need that irada qawiyya that's one of the training ground for us so as we are entering Ramadan, those who are a little bit on the weaker side in terms of their determination to carry out their intention, they find themselves in Ramadan with this huge surge of energy. Why is that? Because in Ramadan, Allah has provided for us what we call the, um, you can even call it a herd immunity. Um, we support each other. We look around the globe. We see people of all colors and race and region doing the same thing, doing the fasting, celebrating iftar, reading Quran, do extra salat. Even those who are not in the habit, you find them being taken along with that herd immunity. So al irad al qawiyya the strong determination, it's been installed in us and shaitan is in jail because when we are together shaitan is hopeless it's only when we are scattered and separated the shaitan can do his dirty job it's ramadan Allah has empowered us and put shaitan in jail in prison so, 
we need to take that lesson we're learning with this huge determination forward to regain and to improve the level of our uh, spirituality, of our Iman, of our being conscious of Allah. The second part is Al-Amal, action. So Ramadan, there is a, a strong determination and there is action. And the action, if we look at it in Ramadan, the first thing is Terkul Haram. We shown all that which was uh, uh, is, uh, prohibited. We move away from anything which is Haram in any form or shape. We reform our eyes, we reform our tongue, we reform our hands, we reform our legs. We don't walk anywhere which is not in line with our Iman. We save God our tongue what you are saying. We control our anger. So, terikul haram. That's observation that we deliberately say, no, I'm in Ramadan, I cannot do that. The idea is to get used to that mindset. Why we cannot do that in Ramadan? Because we are conscious of Allah that we are in these holy mouths which will be rewarded hugely for whatever we do. Secondly, Ramadan we try our best to upgrade ourselves in all sorts of area of deen. We increase not only the quantity of our prayer, but the quality of our prayer as well. al faraid the obligatory, we find ourselves doing, doing it, performing it timely because our mind is switched on to this awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, we listen out for then and we take ourselves to do our prayer. So that is quantity and quality of our obligatory prayers. Also, we find ourselves doing more extra level of ibadah. We do more nawafil. We do more sunan. Uh, we do taraweeh. People who do not usually go to the mosque, the mosque is full. When, well, like this year, that we are unable to participate in the mosque. But in Ramadan, we do more nafila and do more sunnah. Now, our interaction with Quran is also is an area that we improve on it in Ramadan. After all, 
Shahr Ramadan, the Unzila Fihil Quran. It's during this month that Allah has sent Quran to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Ramadan is a special place in relation to Quran. So we find ourselves, now we can divide the um, community to three sections in terms of the, our relation to Al-Quran al karim One group, they know very well, they, they are very fluent in, in reading Quran al Quran, the Quran al karim how to recite Quran with Tajweed. They can do so fluently. But the question is for that group, how then they should be able to upgrade their level and improve on it. That will come in the form of getting to know more about the meaning of Al-Quran al karim They do more research on, the, on those ayahs and surah that they can recite so beautifully. So they do that. That is the area where they can improve themselves. They also can elect to improve the level of Hifdul Hifd Quran. If they know half of it by heart, they want to improve on it. They know a quarter of it, they want to improve on it. Number of surah, they want to increase the number of surah during Ramadan. That's one group. The second group are those who really cannot, they can read, but they are not as fluent. They don't know much about Tejweed. And their pronunciation of Al Quran is a little bit needs uh, improvement. So that category among us, what they need to do is to improve the level of their tajweed, the system of reciting Quran al karim Now, there are two ways to do that. First, you can go through the grammar of it, learning rules and regulation governing the tajweed recitation of Quran, that one, that system, in my opinion, is not for the majority of Muslims because it's very demanding and in some cases very hard for the majority of Muslims to do that. But there is another way to achieve the same end. And that is what we call applied Tejweed. And applied Tejweed means you search one of the hundreds, if not thousands, of our scholars who specialize in recitation of Quran al Karim beautifully. You find the one which is in tune with your ears, the one that matches your taste. You then listen to them and imitate them. You start with any surah, consider Surah Al Fatiha. You start listening the way they are saying it and you imitate it. Because initially, that's how Quran was. Quran initially was for listening and then imitate it. Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah always listened to Jibreel. Jibreel will recite it and Rasul will listen and imitate. So that is the original way of actually learn, learning how to read Quran with Tajweed. So that system of applied Tajweed is very effective. And there are so many thousands, if not millions of people who have learned how to recite Tajweed or Quran with Tajweed beautifully by following that. Finding somebody you like, the voice, and imitate them. And sometimes very difficult, difficult to di distinguish between the two, the original and the imitation. So I would recommend that. 
find a good recital of Quran and listen and listen and listen and listen and listen. You memorize it that way. And you learn in your pronunciation beautifully that way. So that is second group. The third group, the category of people, is the those who do not even know their alphabet. They don't even know Alpha Sa. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but they their level of upgrading themselves will be to say, right, now time has come now. For me to learn my Alif Baratasa, my Arabic, or at least just to learn how to be able to open Mus'haf, the Quran al Karim, and recognize the letters and read it, albeit slow, that will be the first step. And believe me, reading Arabic is very straightforward. It's a very, very straightforward thing to do. It's not as challenging as people uh, sometimes think. And, and in this, um, at this point, let me just tell you that if you go on YouTube, I've put in the free 18 lessons how to, to teach you how to read Arabic. In 18 lessons, each lesson is about 30 minutes long. Just as if you are in the classroom with me. If you search on the YouTube, search for Arabic from the beginning, part one. Under my name, Dr. Imran Alawiye, you will see we can join nearly two million people around the world who have learned learned how to read just simply by following that class. So that category of people need to upgrade themselves by learning how to read Al Quran Al Karim. Just so open the Mus'haf and you'll be able to see. Not only you memorize it, but you can actually see. Because every single letter that you read in the Quran, you get huge reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is area of upgrading and maintaining our level of our spirituality during Ramadan and for the rest of the year. And what else do we do in Ramadan? In Ramadan, we forgive people. We overlook uh, people's mistakes. We just say, okay, now in Ramadan, I want to turn the page. Time has come to rise above all these disputes within the family between husband and wife, between parents and children, between relatives among relatives, neighbor. In Ramadan, we are invited to purify our hearts and to rise above all these petty things and to concentrate on what is important, which is our journey of life, the life is very short. Uh, as we learned this year, the year of COVID-19, when the whole world is in hiding. It's in hiding from what? From unseen disease, unseen virus. We are all, quite rightly, washing our hands like lunatics. Every time, every minute, terrified. You see, this is a journey of life. We never know what is around the corner. Nobody ever predicted the whole world will be in lockdown as we are experiencing in this year year 2020. So, one of the things we are doing in Ramadan as a 
the way of purifying ourselves and also how to improve our level of our uh, spirituality is Vikru law. Vikru law, which means to remember Allah. You see, in Ramadan, right from the moment that we finish our sahur, we are aware that Allah is there. In lam takun tarahu fa innahu yarak. You cannot see him. Allah sees us all the time. That level of awareness is very strong and very sharp during the month of Ramadan. That is an indication for us to say, look, this is what you need to be doing. Vikrullah. Be aware that Allah is there. Because once we are aware that Allah is there and that we are going back to Him, oh, everything else becomes so little. Whatever dispute, the money, whatever the position, the title, no consequences. Once we focus our mind to say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi roji belongs. And we are going back to him. Imagine that we find ourselves in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking us that question that you live 30 years in, in the world, 60 years, 80 years, 80 years, 100 years. How would you account for it? Accounting time. Time? How did you spend your time? Your wealth? How did you get it? If we to, uh, present, could show that we achieve our wealth in a very good way, and way, in relief. But another question How did you spend it? For yourself only? Just for your own comfort. People around the world, some people have no food to eat and you are blind to those people. People who have no food and you are blind to those things. MashaAllah, you have houses all over the place. You, they are suffering, it's not of your concern. You say you believe in Allah. You are entrusted with money and you are embezzled that money. You are given as a director, as a chairman, as a politician, as a president, as a governor, as a, a senate. Whatever title, title that you may be proud of, but other people's suffering is not part of your agenda. You account, we, all of us, will account for it Yom Al Qiyamah. And that's why in Ramadan, we are encouraged to do a lot of sadaqah, to experience the hunger suffering, self-deny, so that we can look around us, look to our right, to our left, in front, behind us, and see the suffering. And not to say, well, I cannot resolve it on my own. No, nobody asked us to resolve it on our own. But do our bit. Do our bit. Everybody. That's why Ramadan, Sadaqah, will be giving a huge reward in Ramadan. So, Zakatul Fitr, for people to feel happy during the Eid. All those things, a training ground for us.
to concentrate on what is important, which is Yom al Qiyama, the day that in uh, uh, sterling and dollars and naira and euro is of no use. Illa man at Allah bi qalbin salim. Only those who come to meet their Lord with pure heart, so they can say, Oh my Lord, I did share, I share, you gave me and I share it. Because I know that I'm coming to see you without carrying any of this. So I share it. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, in this Ramadan, whatever money that we spend to support anything to feed people to those who are in trouble to support charity to support mosque to support uh, individuals or groups so that this was subhanallah the money that we take out of our bank account to do that is ours but the money that we spend to build houses to, to change our cars every year ours in human kiyama there was no record of that but the one we gave away that is banked yomal kiyama the bank that will never go bankrupt. And that will be waiting for us. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, I reminded myself, see in this Ramadan, let's be as generous as possible. In various ways, not only one direction, various ways. Look around, look at people who may be less in terms of in comfort, and let's support them. Let's make a pledge to tell, ah, oh, that person wants to go to school, but you know, cannot pay for the school fees in Nigeria, for instance. How much is going to take? It could be something like a, for a year, it may not be as much as 500 pounds sterling. Spread that across the year, sponsor somebody, People that you know, people that you don't know, is all in our bank account, Yom al Qiyama. So, Dhikrullah is so essential to reform ourselves. Then, Al Ilmu, knowledge. We need to upgrade our knowledge, but our deen. And we are blessed in today's world with the level of communication and the availability of technology through which we can learn, through which we can educate ourselves. We need to make sure we attend these kind of uh, uh, studies that we are talking to each other to benefit. Anytime somebody is given a lecture on any topics if we can we need to join we always gain knowledge knowledge is forever so al -ilmu, so in ramadan remember we still have eight or so days left to catch up because allah is always there opportunity is always there never look back and say oh i'm doomed no we are not with opportunities in front of us. Laylatul Qadr is upon us. Let's search for it with our sadaqah. Let's search for it with our recitation of Quran. Let's search for it for, with our good deeds. It is essential so that we graduate from this college of Ramadan with a good certificate excellent degree excellent immunity that we can take with us to support the rest of the ourselves through the through the year
it is blessing that Allah has given us this opportunity to learn during this month to discover ourselves to strengthen our determination to improve our efforts our studies our action and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us energy to be able to capture the spirit of this month and to benefit ourselves and to benefit our people and to benefit the world so that inshallah Allah with his blessing will forgive us because forgiveness of Allah is underpinning all these things and that's why when uh, Aisha radiallahu anha was asked or oh, he or oh, she actually asked Rasulullah sallam uh, Laylatul Qadr what shall I say what kind of dua he just say ask for Allah for forgiveness Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anni oh Allah you like to forgive you are a forgiver please please Forgive me. You see? Because when we are asking Allah for forgiveness, it means that we have already now realized our wrongdoing, our wrong way. And hopefully, underneath that, we are ready to change our way. We ask Allah to enable us to change our ways to better, inshallah. I will stop here because I was told about half an hour, inshallah. And may Allah, inshallah, accept from us all our efforts and give us enough energy to continue uh, learning and to grow in our uh, quest for Iman and Taqwa Allah Azza Jalla. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhati hasana wa qina adab Allah. وآخر دعواهم الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته We are very grateful to our father, our scholar, our sheikh, Dr. Imran, uh, Dr. Imran Alawi for his thought-provoking lecture he's given us. We pray that Almighty Allah will continue to guide you, bless you, and increase your iman and your barakah. And uh, may you be of service to the Islamic Ummah and the entire universe for many, many more years to come in Asia. Um, may Allah also add this to your son Asana. Please let's recite Surah to Nasser and let's ask Allah to give the Barak of Surah to Nasser to Sheikh Dr. Umran Alawi and his entire family. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ida'ja'a Nasrullahi wa al-Fatih. Wa ra'ayit al